Hello and welcome back to another video. Today going to be talking through the five things I'm most looking forward to in GT7 now that we're getting very close to the launch. Um, well, barely half a month away uh, and 4th of March and I'm very much looking forward to playing it, which I will of course be doing a lot on streams and videos, um, covering it as much as I possibly can once it's out. But thought I'd quickly put together a list of five things I'm most looking forward to with the game about to come out. Starting with number one, which is quite a, a general thing I'm looking forward to, um, the return to classic Gran Turismo. And what I mean by that is a focus on single player campaigns again, uh, unlike Sport, which was very online based and even have the campaign at launch. Uh, and things like the menu homepage style, um, as well as it well, having a homepage and having all of these areas like the used car dealer and GT Auto and, well, the new car dealer, in fact, uh, and all of these places you go and visit to, well, play different elements of the Gran Turismo game in question, as well as the fact that um, they're clearly encouraging the car collecting aspect of the game, which I feel like was kind of missing a bit in sport. So kind of the whole feeling is very much like the Gran Turismo games of old, which is the first kind of main overall thing I'm looking forward to. Focusing in a bit more on point two, um, improved single player and licenses, which kind of links into that a little bit, um, like I said, with the focus on single player. Although we're potentially going to have very tough AI, uh, either, I think it was later they were working on this, but with the new, very stupidly named Sophie system. Um, but sounds like the AI may potentially end up being very tough, which is actually quite good. I'm glad to see that, because in sport they really weren't up to much the AI, even on the difficult setting. Uh, there will be a good full campaign from launch, which I'm looking forward to, unlike sport, which added it later. So, yeah, again, improving the single player experience and hopefully with some tougher licenses in there again, because sport really didn't bother with those. They were far too easy, and Gran Turismo games of old always had very tough license tests, which could get infuriating at times, but that was kind of part of the game, and you were so pleased when you got your license, uh, and then when you worked to get the gold medal for it, and you got a prize at the end, and it was a difficult thing to get, and that was kind of part of the appeal of it. Um, it was a real struggle to get some of these vehicles. So hopefully that will be slightly more like that, maybe not to the levels of some of the old Gran Turismo's that really were beyond tough, which I find unlikely games are generally make it quite easy for people these days. But it'd be nice if they were tougher than sport, at least. Which brings us on to the third thing I'm looking forward to, the return of the classic original Gran Turismo circuits. So the sort of made up circuits that Gran Turismo games always had in them, as well as the sort of world circuits and stuff like that. So several classics tracks that I can't wait to try out, um, even if they are slightly edited versions. I'm hoping they are as enjoyable as they were in older games, but yeah, very much looking forward to that. Really pleased to see them return, and hopefully we'll get more added in updates of, well, the classic Gran Turismo tracks, and potentially some new made-up circuits would be quite a bit of fun, I think. On to um, the fourth thing I'm looking forward to in Gran Turismo 7, the new levels of upgrades and customization, which are pretty incredible. They've taken sort of the best elements from Need for Speed and Forza and combined them with their own traditional upgrade kind of system. Because um, they're having the traditional upgrade shop, which they're calling Understeer en Engineering, um, and that returns to replace the not very good upgrade system in Sport, where you sort of just chose which stage of upgrade you had. So it's really cool to go in and choose parts, much like you do in, well, most other games, but how you used to in old Gran Turismos. And there's some awesome body customization, including spoilers, where you can kind of choose your own custom spoiler, like kind of like old Need for Speed games, but also in old Gran Turismos, you used to choose the sort of styles, which is really cool. Um, and there are rims you can change, and of course wide bodies, which we saw in the trailers, which are very exciting to see. I'm not necessarily expecting them to be on loads, but the cars we have seen them for does look um, like a lot of fun to, well, kind of play about with and can't wait to apply some of those to some cars. GT also also returns, which is not really upgrades and customization, but with oil change and car wash. Um, like I said earlier, it returns, but those kind of features 
not exactly customization, although I think that's where some of the wide bodies and wings are applied. Uh, in terms of customization, painting and stuff, um, adding decals, we can paint brake calipers, which is nice to see. Forza, of course, only recently managed this, despite it being requested for basically all of time. Um, but it's a feature people want to see in pretty much every game. So it's really good to see that come to Gran Turismo as well. Hopefully that will be in most games that release going forward. It'll be good to see that in Test Drive as well, potentially. Um, and also decals can be placed on windows, which of course we have been able to do for a while in Need for Speed, but Forza are yet to manage that. So that's very good to see. And all of the liveries and stuff can be imported forward from sports. So we can potentially bring stuff forward from sports and then edit it to have text and things on the windows. But yeah, can't wait to have a go playing about with that. Although we are going to get millions of people putting eyes on their windscreen and pretending they're from Pixar cars, which is slightly annoying. But yeah, for those of us that want to apply window stickers in a sensible manner, it will be quite good. Not that I mind people messing about and putting eyes on the window. That's just a bit of fun, isn't it? Um, yeah, so many more options with the customization than we've seen previously. So yeah, really excited to make some cool new liveries with um, the ability to place things on the windows and paint brake calipers and, well, add the body modifications that we want to our cars and paint them in many, many, many paint colours, which is always a lot of fun. Which brings me on to the fifth and final thing I'm looking forward to in the new Gran Turismo 7, the car list. With, of course, over 400 cars. We saw in the most recent trailer um, the F8 Tributo, Testarossa and some 3 litre CSL BMWs very prominently uh, in the recent trailer. And lots of other things have been spotted throughout the other trailers that are new and very exciting. In this new one, for example, there was also a Plymouth Superbird. Um, there was a Radical spotted in there. And, yeah, just looking forward to many of these new cars and returning cars from older games that we obviously haven't had the chance to drive in sport. Um, there does seem to be a bit of a focus on Porsche. Um, we found that in some of the earlier trailers. They're making quite a big deal out of that. And also out of Toyota. But yeah, like I say, many, many new cars, including all of the ones I've just said, and DeLorean returning. So yeah, really looking forward to driving some of this stuff that wasn't in sport, basically. Giving a go all of the new cars that we haven't been able to drive, well, before or recently. And also being able to drive them around some of these really cool original circuits hopefully in a good single player mode against some tough ai so yeah with huge levels of customization as well so really is um looking like it's going to be a really really good game so very much looking forward to playing this i'll of course be streaming it as soon as it comes out um but also making plenty of videos and content on it um beyond that as well and hopefully streaming it for well many weeks to come after it releases hopefully it will keep me very busy because I'm very much looking forward to it and yeah I'm probably going to end up playing this a lot and it's perfectly timed really Forza Horizon 5's been out just that amount long enough that we're ready for a new game and then when the time comes um, for Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown um, GT7 will have been out for a while by then but yeah let's not get too far ahead of ourselves to begin with let's just look forward to GT7 which is coming out very soon can't wait to play it um, and like I say those are the five things I'm most looking forward to um, that just having a new Gran Turismo game is amazing. I am, of course, going to be playing it on PS4, which is slightly limiting, because um, PS5s are, well, they don't exist, um, which is slightly unfortunate, but nevertheless, I'm very much looking forward to GT7 releasing. So do let me know if there's anything you think I've missed that you're particularly looking forward to, or anything you're looking forward to more than the five things I've mentioned. But yeah, I do very much look forward to playing it once it is out. And hopefully you're all as excited as I am for this new upcoming game. But for now, that is going to be all for today's video, going over the five things I'm most looking forward to in Gran Turismo 7. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back with the next video very soon.